the Achilles heel for ETSU in 2021, point guard. Hi everybody, I'm Marky Bilson, and as ETSU prepares to play Mercer tonight, Wednesday, February the 3rd, at 7 p.m. down in Macon, Georgia, the Buccaneers' four-game winning streak was halted by the Wofford Terriers on Monday in a makeup game. Wofford took them down 67-62, and this was in large part because of a 15-0 first-half run Wofford was able to go on when the Buccaneers had a 26-12 lead. Looked like it was going to be clear sailing ahead, and then... Mm, yeah. And I am going to tell you why the Buccaneers were so manhandled. It's because they don't really have a true point guard. Uh, I'm a fan of the point guard, and I know that the idea of, you know, against the zone defense playing back and the point guard lazily putting up, you know, fingers and calling the play and all that, I mean, it speaks of a pre-shot clock era, for crying out loud. Yeah, no, that's probably not going to be the modern-day point guard. I get it. But the modern-day point guard still has to be the player that makes the players around him better, not necessarily just pat onto his own scoring total. And that's something that Ladarius Brewer's got to learn. Now, Ladarius Brewer is one of three players that have played point guard this year for the Buccaneers. One is David Sloan, and the Bucs haven't played all that well when Sloan has been at the point. Uh, committed five turnovers against Wofford, but has committed a lot of turnovers on the season. Next thing, Brewer is more about scoring, and it appears as goes Brewer, as goes the Buccaneers. Ladarius Brewer, not his brother Ty. It's a great brother act, but still. Ladarius Brewer scored eight points in 34 minutes against Wofford. That's not enough. And the other Southern Conference game that ETSU lost this year, he didn't play in COVID concerns. So as goes Brewer and the point guard, as goes the Buccaneers. Other player, Cyril Smith Jr., who may just be the best player on the Buccaneers, the Maryland transfer. However, he is just not one of these guys who's going to be, you know, thinking pass first and shoot second. I don't think that any of these players really are. And one of them must be, but you don't want to take Brewer out of the scoring lineup. You really don't want to take Smith out of it either. And so that leaves Sloan and Sloan is the team's third leading scorer. And here's the challenge for Jason Shea right now. He's got to find a way to have a better offense. The Buccaneers are ranked last in scoring in the Southern Conference. They are tops in scoring defense, but last in scoring. And a lot of this is that in a poor shot selection. They don't have the point guard who's down there saying, okay, we're going to run the play. They are having a, hey, if your feet are towards the bucket and you're open, take the shot. That's the ETSU offense. And one of the problems with it also is perhaps not enough three-point shots. The Buccaneers are last in three-point shots attempted in the Southern Conference. If you can get three out of the bucket, that's better than getting two. I'm not breaking any news right there. Uh, so here comes Mercer. The Mercer Bears, although they are only three and five in the conference, have an identical 10 and six overall record with ETSU. They are one and a half point favorites. The line has actually gone a half point in the Bears' favor. On top of that, the Bears are a team with five players in double-digit scoring averages, led by Ross Cummings, a senior from Dixon, Tennessee. They also have five players averaging two or more assists a game this year. So it's a team that is very unselfish, perhaps the antithesis of ETSU. Mercer also figures to be better rested. They are coming off a game with, yes, Wofford, but they lost to the Terriers by three points on Saturday. That was their last game. The Buccaneers losing by five points to the Wofford Terriers. Perhaps not that big of a deal, but yeah, Monday game versus Saturday game, that is a big deal, and here's another big deal. 
ETSU only played eight players in the game against Wofford. So this is going to be a challenge for Jason Shea. He's got to have some discipline on his offense. He's got to ask whoever he plays point guard maybe to shoot less and try to make the players around him better. And he's got to find a way to get more reserves into tonight's game because they're going to poop out if you have the starters all playing 30 minutes like their VMI or something like that. This game could come down to uh, Truth Harris or somebody of that nature and how well they play. Going to be very interesting. But right now, the Buccaneers, they're looking, are they going to be a team contending for the regular season championship of the Southern Conference? Got to win this game if they are, or else they fall a game back in the loss column. Or are they going to fall more to the pack of Mercer and Chattanooga and VMI, which, to be honest with you, at the start of the year was kind of what people thought ETSU might be. So it is a big game if regular season college basketball can be called a big game in this day and age. It's a big game for ETSU tonight at Mercer. Folks, I'm Marky e. Bilson. Nobody else gives you analysis like this. I recommend that you hit the bell on YouTube and, yeah, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, now on Gab, now on Rumble. Subscribe to my Rumble channel. That's right, Marky e. Bilson, Rumble. You may be watching this on Rumble. Or I also ask you follow me on Medium. So, Medium, Twitter, Gab, Rumble, and YouTube. I'm here for you. Talk to you next time.